Are you considering bariatric surgery? How do you prepare yourself mentally for this huge decision? Stay right where you are because psychologist Dr. Connie Stapleton, who specializes in bariatric surgery, is with me to share five ways to help you get in the right mindset. They're back. ProCare Health's customer favorite calcium dark chocolate bars are now available online at ProCareNow.com. Creamy chocolate plus calcium and vitamin D. You'll love them. Use code SUSAN10 to save 10%. Hi, I'm registered dietitian. Dietitian nutritionist Dr. Susan Mitchell. You're listening to the Bariatric Surgery Success Podcast, episode number 76. Most of my career, I've worked in some type of media, particularly radio, where I did morning drive nutrition spots over 18 years. That led me to my love of podcasting, and actually, that's where I started podcasting at the radio station. Ultimately, it led me to you. I created Bariatric Surgery Success to provide you every week life-changing information, always going to be based on science and simple strategies and tools to help you be successful in your entire journey. I'm happy you've connected with me today. You're in the right place, and I'm glad you're listening. Don't forget, sign up for the weekly newsletter if you haven't already. You'll get helpful tips. You'll hear about new freebies, info on the latest podcast episode, be the first to know about products, specials, whatever's going on, you'll find out. You can sign up today on my homepage, breakingdownnutrition.com. Joining me via Skype is Atlanta-based psychologist, Dr. Connie Stapleton. Well, thanks to your request, Dr. Connie has become a regular guest, and she's here about every six weeks answering all your questions. You've heard her, and you know she has a vast experience in the field of weight loss surgery. But more importantly, she's here to help you, to help you with your relationship with yourself, with your family, and with your friends. She teaches you better ways to deal with life stuff. You can find links in the show notes to Dr. Connie's website, complete with resources as well as her podcast called Barry Aftercare. Welcome back, Dr. Connie. Hello, Dr. Susan, and I am so excited about being a regular part of your podcast. You know, we're a good team and you do amazing work and I'm honored to be part of this. Well, thank you. And my listeners love you because you get right to the point and you get into the nitty gritty of what's really going on in mental health. So between the nutrition and mental health, I think we've got it covered. I'm really looking forward to the new year and the different topics. I know that you're going to be talking uh, upcoming soon about night eating syndrome. So I'm really looking yes. forward to that. That's a tough one, right? It's a very tough one, and many people struggle with that, yeah. so that'll be great. Well, you know, today, if people are eager to get bariatric surgery because they just want to get rid of that stubborn weight that they've struggled with for years, but they're frustrated often with the number of hoops, as they call them, they have to jump through in order to be cleared for surgery. What do you, as a psychologist, want patients to know before they have surgery? First of all, that these hoops are really important. I know they're a pain in the rear, but it's so critical that you have as much information going in as possible because even though the, you know, your stomach is going to change, the smaller, you're going to have a small pouch, but you, you know, what we find is that there are so many complicated histories with food, right? Eating, losing weight, gaining weight, the yo-yo diet, that all or nothing, I'm going to do it all or forget it, I'm going to do nothing. None of that changes with surgery. So I really want people to understand that this is a very complicated situation. And you need absolutely what Dr. Susan helps you with, which is the diet and nutrition. But in addition to that, because of the complicated relationship that people have with food, there are a lot of mental health issues related to this. And a lot of people don't figure that out until a couple of years out when that weight loss has kind of slowed down as it should. But there are, you know, there are so many people who come into weight loss surgery with, you know, current issues, anxiety, with stress. We live in a crazy world, right? We right. have marriage issues, partner issues, kid issues, bosses, coworkers, stress, stress, stress. But there's also so many people who carry a lifetime of baggage 
related to emotional remnants from the past. Could have been with parents, being picked on at school, coaches, teachers, aunts, uncles, cousins, neighbors, whatever. But these issues, if they're unresolved, if you have trauma, if you have neglect in your history, if you have any kind of abuse, and even though people think, oh, that's in the past, doesn't affect me today, the research says, and it's very clear, that the past does affect our present and very often in our bodies. And so when we use food to maybe uh, feel better when some of that taps us on the shoulder or says, I'm still here, then we have to deal with these issues. So I want people to know going into this, get all the information that you can about the dietary and mental health emotional issues that people are struggling with after they've had surgery. You know, and I so agree with that. It's really critical that you understand that surgery doesn't prevent you from gaining weight back. I mean, yes, you're gonna lose weight, but like you just said, there's two issues they have to look at, how they eat afterwards and then how they eat for the long haul afterwards, but then also the fact that even though that stomach size changed, as you just said, the issues from a mental health standpoint haven't. What would you say are the most frequent issues that raise their ugly heads in your line of work? Oh, absolutely. It's self-esteem related and it's self-esteem related to issues that happened as a child because that's where we develop our self-esteem. So as adults, we may have great self-esteem when it comes to our job or parenting or whatever. But if you experience any kind of trauma, and I mean from verbal abuse from whomever to uh, neglect, not being you know, being home alone a lot as a kid or not having your physical or dental needs met or into traumatic kinds of abuse from physical abuse, emotional abuse, and sexual abuse. There are tremendous amounts of those kinds of abuse. And sadly, a lot of people deal with those things by developing comfort in food. So if that's part of your past, understand, I always joke with people, it's like, if you don't like your mother-in-law before you get married, why do you think you're going to like her after you got married? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've got issues. Yeah. Related. So yeah, if you're, you know, if you've got a struggle in your relationship with food, meaning you turn to it for emotional reasons or comfort, or you're going to have those same Issues after surgery. Exactly. And that's really the whole reason that you and I've developed this relationship and this podcast, because the two, the food issues, the mental health issues, they literally hold hands with each other. And we've got to go back and forth. And the more we do, in, in my opinion, the stronger the outcome from your surgery is going to be. Without a doubt. So I have patients ask me, and you too, I'm sure, how can I regain weight after having surgery. Doesn't the fact that I'm eating less food make it impossible to regain weight? Well, we know from what you just said about the unresolved um, trauma. Anything different on that? Because I want you to go into the five uh, top strategies you give people. But is there anything else that we should know from your side about focusing on, on food for coping, things like that? Yeah, you know, a lot of these triggers are subconscious. So you may feel something at work like you're mad at your boss and what he did was remind you of your father, but your brain's not putting that together. You're just like, I don't like how I feel and I want to feel better and I run to food. So understanding that this is very complicated and you're probably not even aware of a lot of the triggers, but any kind of trigger that reminds you of any kind of past emotional trauma. That then was, leads to a food. Yes, <laughs> yes, leads to a food. I want you to really address now specific, say four or five mental health strategies to help get in the right mindset so that you set yourself up for success in your upcoming surgery. Great. This is great. The first one is engage in curiosity. Be curious. Be open-minded. When you have to go through all these hoops, realize there's a reason for it. So be open-minded and soak in and become aware of what's involved, both in the terms of the physical changes in your body, but the need for emotional support as you go through this process. So open-mindedness and curiosity. This, the second very specific thing is to have a mentor. Have somebody in your journey with you 
who's had surgery more than three years ago because those in the first couple of years are still in the honeymoon and it hasn't gotten that difficult yet. So have a mentor, someone three years or more out of surgery next. Yes. Some people don't have that because some people don't even tell their family that they've had this surgery uh, and their friends. But I want to just say right here, this is a good time to get into our private Facebook group. Find it's the same name as the podcast on Facebook and get in there with us because everyone in the group is at different stages, getting ready, preparing for surgery, just had it last week, a few months down the road, years down the road, and we discuss all kinds of things. So if for some reason you don't have that mentor, get in our group anyway, but this will help. I think that's a perfect, perfect place to find someone. You need someone who's years beyond because they have they have started understanding the struggles and how difficult it can be for some to keep that weight off. Now, in addition to a specific mentor, remember, they're not going to run out to you. You've got to engage and get one. But additional support, both peer support and professional support. So peer support, there's a lot of Facebook groups. There's a lot of social groups. You want to get involved with people who are digging a little deeper than just taking the selfies because they enjoy seeing how great they look. That's fun and it's wonderful. Do it but get a little deeper. So peer support and professional support, ongoing support with Dr. Susan, because you have to understand the nutrition and the dietary needs of a bariatric patient. What you're saying that that tough times come for everyone. Things are not always easy. And when the tough times come, having a mentor or a group in place lets you go right to that instead of starting to turn back to where you don't want to. Absolutely. So definitely important. And then have a track sheet of some sort for your daily habits. The daily habits of eating as a bariatric patient needs to eat every several hours, starting protein, a lot of really healthy vegetables, fruits, the things that Dr. Susan teaches you, but also engaging in exercise and engaging in therapy if you need that. But a daily habits checklist for accountability is critical. And the last tip that I will give you is immersion. Immersion in learning healthy coping skills because we need to replace turning to food with healthier coping skills. And you can do that by looking online, by asking at your support groups, by talking to your mentor and your peer support and your professional support because coping skills are critical to doing well in this process. Well, I love it, Dr. Connie, and it's my new term for 22. Uh, and it's called habit stacking. So, oh, <laughs> yes. are you reading Atomic Habits like I am? I, I haven't read it yet, but I've heard of it. But I just love that term, habit stacking, mm-hmm. because I just think it it says with a checklist, you get in this habit of knowing. Okay, today I'm eating a certain way. I'm I'm going to walk, or I'm going to do this or that, and you build a habit on top of a habit on top of a habit. And right. It's a it's a great thing. All right, as we wrap up, what's going on in Atlanta, or what are you working on that we all need? to know about well i've got i'm going to be having a new book coming out pretty soon which is called mind prep and it's going to help you prepare emotionally and tell you what to look out for later on down the road and i also have a 10-week online class starting in february first week of february it's called gain while you lose so you're going to gain education and support and all those good things and lose some stinking thinking and some weight and you can find out about that on my website at ConnieStaplesonPhD.com. Great. I was just going to ask that. Any final thoughts before we wrap? Be curious, dig deep, and enjoy this process. I'd love to end on a positive note. Thank you so much. We'll see You're you welcome. in the new year or hear you in the new year. <laughs> Sounds great. You take care. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. If you have more questions you want Don, Dr. Connie to answer, the next time she's here, remember that's going to be probably about every six weeks, just contact me through my website, breakingdownnutrition.com. You'll see the Contact Us link at the top of the page. You can messenger me through Facebook as well, or just reply to one of the weekly newsletters. I read all of that email that comes in. Take care of you. We will talk to you again soon. Remember, you're worth Bariatric Surgery Success with Dietitian Dr. Susan Mitchell is produced in 
information owned by Practicalories, LLC. All rights reserved. Remember, the content provided on this podcast is for information purposes only. It doesn't create a patient-provider relationship. It's intended to provide reference material and is not designed to provide medical advice. Please consult your health care provider regarding any medical issues you have relating to symptoms, conditions, diseases, diagnosis, treatments, and side effects. Podcast guests express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions, which do not necessarily reflect or agree with the host, Dr. Susan Mitchell, or Practicalories, LLC.